So we're in the midst of like a G3 geomagnetic storm, they say. And I think that's why we see this ring around the sun. And this cloud cover is like the filtration. Solar radiation mitigation program openly disclosed kind of stuff. Hey folks, a lot of you have been sharing the links about the upward lightning. The earth strikes back, the earth discharges, and as many of you are correctly realizing, this is part of the ongoing earth magnetic change, the increased electromagnetic activity of the geodynamics, the increased atmospheric electricity. This is something that is going to be more and more common, something we are seeing more and more commonly. The reason is because, as scientists are discovering, there are connections between solar flares and lightning, CMEs and lightning, geomagnetic storms, the solar wind magnetic reversal that comes with the heliospheric current sheet, the sector boundary crossing, and some of the most strong correlations of all come with galactic cosmic rays, which are modulated both by Earth's magnetic field and the sun. The how, the why, that's easily found in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. The implications for how bad it's going to get. We cover those fairly well in the next end of the world and a bit more in the upcoming supplement. But what you need to realize is this. Everything is being amplified. This is not just the magnetic field of Earth changing more and more. This is not just increased signs we're seeing in the atmosphere and ionosphere. This is not just the migration. This is not just the migration problems that we're already seeing in everything from birds and insects and marine mammals. It's not just the lightning. It's not just the people who seem to be going along with Earth's magnetic field, if I may. And for those who take the religious aspect and see how well these natural changes and these scary things happening with the population match up with your books, realize it's not just religion. Great works of philosophy that do not qualify as religion say the same thing is going to happen, and it all makes sense. Because we are electromagnetic creatures with electromagnetic brains. Every thought we have is in the radio wave and it affects every part of our body. Our thoughts are very important to us. Think about the placebo effect or negative psychosomatic effects. These processes affect more than just let's pick up a hammer. Let's write down a word. They affect our emotional stability, how we deal with anxiety, terror, fear. These changes that are causing the increased upward lightning, the Earth discharges, are the same changes that are starting to affect Earth's rotation and we're speeding up faster and faster. They're the same ones that are starting to affect people's mental stability across the planet. If you haven't noticed that one yet, I don't know where you have been. But these things you're sending, we're seeing them. Thank you for sending them in. It is wonderful to see how many of you have your eyes open. When it comes to prepping, if I may make a little note on this, this is something that has to be prepared for in what we're talking about. There are a lot of ways in which the preparation we deem necessary is different than your three-day bug out bag, different than your earthquake preparedness, certainly different than the nuclear apocalypse scenario the electromagnetic aspect. And by the way, we don't cover prepping as much, about as much as we do is go over some of the specifics for how the natural disaster with the sun and Earth's magnetic field are going to affect it. You know who I watch a lot? Canadian Prepper, if I can give a little shout out. He, um, he's really knowledgeable. Uh, the videos are entertaining and informative to watch. Looks like we have about the same bench press, just really like the guy. Anyway, uh, the point is, Eyes open on all of this. All of it matters, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. We're getting ready for the next stage of Earth. Be safe, everyone. Good morning, folks. We are 100% focused on the sun today as the active region on the north has continued firing solar flares after growing to its potential yesterday morning. Here... We've put a 131 angstrom X-ray flare view on top of the sunspots, and you can see how it's the group of numerous smaller spots, all mashed together, that is releasing those events. 
since last night's update. Another M-Class flare has occurred and we still expect more, especially with several sunspot groups on the disk and the flare maker still with both magnetic polarities crammed in and interacting. Of the now seven M-Class solar flare events, only two have produced coronal mass ejections, CMEs. The first one, and the one that erupted right at the turn of the day, UTC, are coming at Earth. If you didn't catch last night's update or didn't stay until the end, we are almost sure to get geomagnetic storm activity, but it's almost certain to be minor. The only caveat is that more flares and CMEs may erupt. If we get more CMEs heading our way, the geomagnetic risks will increase. You may recall that the solar flares hit the interplanetary magnetic field connection between the Earth and Sun and surged a proton radiation storm at the poles. It was only a low-level event and has already descended back down below the storm threshold. Of course, the story to come is the CMEs. We saw both eruptions on SOHO, both are halo events, suggesting that they are indeed heading at Earth. There appears to be a slightly faster speed to the second one as shown on Stereo A satellite, and NOAA has updated their emerald spiral to show both eruptions and a quasi-combined impact Thursday morning. Density shocks merge, slight separation to the speed peaks there on the model. Whether they hit in succession or combine into one, we should get minor geomagnetic activity, but nothing close to anything scary. We do still expect more solar flares, and we'll be watching for any more CMEs they release. A quick moment to answer your questions on weather, seismic, and biological effects of these events. Well, those took 300 pages and 500 citations, with me being choosy, and there's about to be a supplement updating that book, and the next end of the world. There are too many meteorological connections and forcing pathways to mention them all here, but the biological effects are clear and worth mentioning. So far, the number one effect of this event has been the solar flare ionization. As long as the flaring uptick lasts and for a day or two afterwards, high-risk cardiac and mental patients are at major risk for adverse events. And all biological life is subject to moderate cognitive loss and moderate to severe emotional instability. You know anyone who lost it yesterday? The collection of the best peer-reviewed science on solar forcing in the disaster cycle is at otf.cells.com. A day or two afterwards, high-risk cardiac and mental patients are at major risk for adverse events. And all biological life is subject to moderate cognitive loss and moderate to severe emotional instability. You know anyone who lost it yesterday? The collection of the best... So that's why I said that the rabies story might just be a cover for why the fox was acting so weird. And if that cover story needs to expand to explain why the people are acting so weird, so be it. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going over to Rome, Italy, where you're going to see a young lady that just a few hours ago had a extremely close encounter with lightning down here on Earth. We're going up to space, the International Space Station. You're going to see some unusual lightning noticed by Mary Hall from the International Space Station. A couple of UV readings I want to share with you guys that I've taken in the last couple of days during all of this heightened solar activity that we're going to talk about here in just a moment looking at the earth facing side of the sun that is a earth directed x flare the energy was detected down here in the ionosphere of earth almost instantly here's another view of that x flare you're going to see some plasma over here on the northeastern limb of the sun very tall plasma loops right there see that that is extreme magnetism at its finest, looking at the ionosphere reacting to those solar flares almost instantly as we live in the corona of a star. So the ionosphere should react almost instantly to that type of energy. What you're looking at here is the D region of the ionosphere reacting to ionized radiation from the Earth-directed solar flares. I also took UV readings on the 30th, 31st, and 1st. I'm going to show you guys all of those readings right now. 31st, 12.1. Estimated was a 7.3. You can see conditions were partly cloudy, a few clouds off in the distance, but nothing to really speak of. Also took a reading on April 1st of 2022. 
Again, skies were pretty clear that day. The sun was out in full force. No clouds to speak of. In fact, I think this day it was mostly sunny. Estimated UV is 7.3. And I detected an 11.6 on that day, which is a form of extreme UV. 11 plus is considered extreme UV. And I have one more reading to share with you guys. This one is from March 29th of 2022. Again, during all of this heightened solar activity, you can see the anticipated was a 7.3. And on this day, the skies were partly cloudy, as you can see here. Temperature 64 degrees, and the UV was very high that day. In fact, the, the UV C actually went up to 0 0.05, and the UVAB was a 12.69, and you can see over here on this graph, extreme is 11 plus. This was 12.6 on this day at high noon on March 29th of 2022, so definitely seeing an increase in overall UV. Coming back over here to the website, site here on the homepage, the photo I posted was from North Dakota during the recent auroras. Photo sent in by Missy from Springbrook, North Dakota, who witnessed auroras on the night of March 30th into March 31st. Incredible photo from North Dakota. The first place I ever heard of the Schumann cavity resonance, which is what he's showing you here, the fluctuations within it, were from Greg Braden when I watched his videos called Awakening to Zero Point and Beyond Zero Point, The Collective Initiation. And Zero Point is referring to zero magnetics, which we're quickly approaching and that is why the weakening magnetic field is showing all these effects. And the Schumann cavity resonance seems to be part of why uh, maybe people are freaking out because the natural 7.8 rhythm of life that always was forever and ever that they classified and stopped broadcasting or publishing in textbooks in 1956 after the IGY International Geophysical Year, a conclave of international science gurus got together and all decided that was now a secret number 7.8, the Schumann cavity resonance, because it was also used for military guidance systems of missiles and stuff like that. Well, that heartbeat and rhythm of Earth started to increase, and now it's kind of way out of whack, and so that was the resonance frequencies that your heart was tuned to. They call it the... Uh, Basically, a resonant frequency that comes, according to Greg Braden, from the great central sun bathing outwards into all the interstellar space across all the stars. And to our sun, which broadcasts a frequency to our earth, which broadcasts a frequency to us. And there is this resonant frequency where you're all tuned to the same frequency. And that was the Schumann cavity resonance at the end point of that chain that he called, I forget what he called it, the great sacred circuit or something to that effect. And so the effects on people, this is why it was more important than ever to develop a daily spiritual practice, to be able to get tuned to the frequency of, well, that's also why love is still the answer, like Jason Mraz sings about, because if the amplification of those internal drives which drive most people from an, emo an emotional, instinctive place where they just do what they do without even thinking about it because they felt like it. That's the other half of them that they never got in touch with and never came to know or understand, thus have no control over, and now it's being amplified. So if you got darkness in your heart, it's going to be amplified. But if you've been cleaning out your internal world and learning to manage and get to know and become familiar with that other part of yourself that is essentially what drives all of our decisions. We do everything we do because we believe it will make us feel better. And so that amplified internal drive system that most people have no control over, no understanding of, and they're not familiar with, they don't even know it, it exists. They just do what they feel like and then... Try and explain with the left brain what the right brain just did, that type thing. Analyze it and justify it. But that's going to be why you see people unable to cope with life around them because they're being influenced in external stimuli 
that's been happening all around us. We're harboring and transferring frustration and anger and feelings of loss of self-control uh, over our own lives due to rules and regulations and laws and bylaws and protocols and procedures and mandates and restrictions and all the, all the above. And so now that's being amplified and there's a synergistic effect when it's combined with these increased Schumann cavity resonance frequencies and zero magnetic field. Remember the Russians lost their mind when they sent cosmonauts up into space without an artificial magnetic field around them. So the combination of all these things are going to cause people to kind of whack out. So just remember that when you're going about your daily life, you're dealing with people that are so unstable because they're feeling ways that they never have before.